And welcome to another In The Geek Room, films of 2020. So I'm counting down all the... Well, I'm counting down, it's not exactly exact word. I'm doing, literally keeping a record of every film I actually watched this year. And we are now in May. So I started off in May with the 65th film I've watched this year with Narnia, The Lion, the Witch and the Wardrobe on uh, Disney+. Plus. watched it because of uh, uh, the prop culture series that's on Disney+. Plus. All right, uh, first time I've seen it, it was all right. I will eventually watch the sequels. Uh, then I went to Dunkirk, fantastic film. Uh, one of Christopher Nolan's best, in my opinion. Uh, then Jackie Brown. I did this, uh, watched it for a little bit of research for uh, the uh, High Ground podcast, a little plug there, and uh, Pirates of the Caribbean on Stranger Tides. I love Pirates of the Caribbean, but on Stranger Tides is without a doubt the weak one. Should never have had Jack Sparrow as the central character. He works better as a secondary character. Followed by Couples Retreat, which uh, is number six, is the 69th film of the year. Couples Retreat film you, you may not have heard of. Vince Vaughn, John Favreau star, and absolutely fantastic. One of the funniest films I've seen in year, like, years. I watched it because I'm a big John Favreau fan. And uh, followed by Zombie Land. And Zombieland Double Tap, absolutely fantastic films. That I had to get them from my Blu-ray collection because just love these films. If you haven't seen Double Tap, watch Double Tap. Then is uh, Dark Right Night, Dark Night Rises. Uh, just wanted to watch it again. Bit of research for uh, something which I hope to do with the the High Ground podcast. Uh, followed by Control, a film about Joy Division and Ian Curtis. It's it's the you know there's two films to watch about that sort of thing you've got control and 24-hour party people control is the darker more serious one uh, just focusing on ian curtis and joy division highly recommend it starship troopers hadn't seen it in years found it cheap on google play so uh, had to get starship troopers absolutely fantastic but i forgot how good it was then there's uh the burbs again saw this cheap on google play so uh, it's yeah, Burbs. I haven't seen that in over 20 years. Uh, I forgot how really genuinely it is. it's a fantastic film. If you haven't seen Burbs, Tom Hanks, Carrie Fisher, Bruce Stern, superb film. Then uh, Westworld again. I love the series Westworld, and uh, the movie is absolutely superb. It's, it's, it's a classic and came out in 1974. So uh, then you followed Westworld. I've got to go back and going back to Westworld, the Blu-ray. Get the Blu-ray, it's got uh, the pilot for the TV series Beyond Westworld, which I didn't even know about. But it's really, it's worth paying for the Blu-ray just, just for that bonus feature. Then there's Future World. Uh, you know what, it's not even got subtitles on this disc. Because we got it on Blu-ray, because you know, we were last lo able to locate it. And the film's really, really good, uh, but the Blu-ray's... It doesn't even have a, have a subtitles track on it, so wasn't happy about that. Postcards from the Edge, again, one that I saw cheap, and it's one I've been wanting to see for some time, so I haven't seen this in over 20 years, and, you know, genuinely a fantastic film. It, it's seriously underrated, I mean, the performances, Mel Streep and Shirley MacLaine, superb, and, and you know, Carrie Fisher's script. You know, I will eventually read the book of the, the of the film, of the, the book the film is based on. Going back to the Star Trek, we have been having a while since we've done Star Trek, so we uh, continue it with Star Trek Four: The Voyage Home. Turns out my fiance had never seen it, and it's like, it's the 80s. I, I consider it to be like one of the classic ones of the Star Treks. And then there's Star Trek V, The Final Frontier. I was so devastated when she said she enjoyed it. That film has not aged. Well, I mean, Star Trek Five from uh, the five watch so far, that is without a doubt the week one. Then uh, again, for a little bit of research, we're ending the month oh, with the penultimate one, which was RoboCop Director's Cut from the Arrow Blu-ray box set. Well, again, watch this for a bit of research for the High Ground podcast. Again, I'm promoting the High Ground podcast. Uh, absolutely superb, ultra violent, a absolute classic. And uh, we ended May with Jurassic World. Oh, and we watched it uh, 
you know what, here's the thing, you know, uh, a couple of years ago I bought a cheap projector from Amazon for £50 so that wanted to watch projector films onto the wall that uh, we'd missed in the big in the cinema, you know, uh, or we, films we wanted to relive the big the, the big screen experience of. So uh, we decided to watch Jurassic World, and you know what, seeing it projected onto a wall and having and we recreated the cinema experience with trailers and everything, and uh, it, it's it's superb. It's, it's just a great way to experience these classic movies. Well, I know Jurassic World. It's too young to be defined as a classic, but it has the scope to be actually watched on a bigger screen than a TV screen. So that's how I ended May. So that's Jurassic World brings the movie, individual movies I've watched so far in 2020 up to 82. So I'll see you on the June movies I watched in June, starting with number 83. See you all soon.